Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the vlog. This is Car Connections. Boy, oh boy, it is, it is a scorcher in the good old Lone Star state of Texas. Uh, I want to say it's about 102 degrees, guys, and it's, it's hot. What I want to talk about today is just the value of cars and how depreciation is going to have a major, major impact. And I'm going to start with the car I own today, which is a uh, 2020 uh, Porsche Taycan certified pre-owned. If you guys have been following the channel, you guys know how long I've owned it for. But what I really want to talk about and really focus a lot is on depreciation and how it's funny how, you know, you're told to wait two, three years before you buy a car. So you allow the first owner to take full depreciation. I'm going to share with you guys how much depreciation I've had on my Porsche Taycan. I've probably lost it's probably lost maybe 60, 70 percent of its original value. And, and Porsche Taycan is not the only one. What I'm noticing is most electric cars, for some reason, are depreciating way faster than your traditional ice or combustion uh, type vehicles. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to go over the window sticker. We're going to go check out the ride right now. Give it a cold start. Let's see how that engine starts. I haven't turned on the car all day, so I think the cold start's gonna sound pretty epic. And I also got some new vanity plates that I ordered for the car. You know, what's crazy is when I drive around this car, a lot of people think it's, it's they don't know it's electric. They just don't. They think, they'll ask sometimes, what type of engine does the car have? You know, it catches a lot of eyeballs. And so people will ask, is it a V8? What is it? It looks super exotic. And I'll be like, it's electric. So I bought these vanity plates that maybe will help a little bit people when they do see it. Uh, <clears throat> and they'll know, oh, okay, uh, it's probably electric just based on the license plates. If people understand what it means, some people might not even understand what the license plate really stands for. So there she is. She's actually sitting kind of high. So I have it, I have it programmed that as a car comes in through the driveway, it auto lifts and that way I don't scuff it and it comes right in. So right now she's sitting on, she's on four by four motion, but here's the vanity plates. I thought it was pretty cool. You know, a lot of people will give me a hard time around. You shouldn't share your license plates, you know, online. Everybody's license plate is visual, visible when you're driving. Anybody can see them. So I, I get it. Maybe there's some other risk, but there it is. That's the new Texas license plate I'm going to install on her today. And I love the, the, the Texas flag. I think it looks cool. And net zero. Net zero. In case you guys are not familiar with electric vehicles, it just means that the car the car is putting out you know zero carbon footprint. Uh, since it's electric, you know it's not uh, releasing those CO2 emissions that a traditional ICE vehicle would have. To be fair, it is electric, but in case you do not know, it takes a car that's electric about thirty thousand miles of usage before it actually gets down to net zero, because these cars are still built with fossil fuels. So you don't, you know, if you're really trying to be kind of a tree hugger, if you want to call it, you know, it doesn't happen immediately. You actually have to own the car for a good period of time before you actually start breaking a little even. All right, let me show you all the window sticker of the car. And that way you guys can see what the original cost of this car was, which was $160,000. Uh, and if you add tax title and license, you're probably pushing closer to like 185 to 190,000. And this car, if you want to go out and buy it in the open market right now, you could probably get it for $90,000, guys. That's a huge, huge depreciation. So whoever buys these cars or who has owned this car from the very beginning, whoo, buddy. So let me get the window sticker. Let me show y'all what I mean so you guys can see the details. All right, so here's the window sticker. I'll zoom in and of course you guys can pause it wherever you would like, but you can see this car is completely optioned up. The original car was 103,000, but once you add all the little bits here from Porsche, all these little bits, you could see $160,000. That includes the delivery and processing and handling fee. So. Pretty incredible for whoever bought this car initially, pain. And when I say pain, I mean, it's painful. And by the way, I wasn't joking. I'm in my garage and the door's been open and it's a whopping 100 degrees, guys. So 100 degrees and your boy's wearing a sweater. Um, it's cold inside, I, I, you know, it's hot, but when I'm inside my house or I'm at work, 
it can get a little too cold for me, man, believe it or not. So I have to always have a sweater with me. You know, when I was younger, your boy never wear, worried about having to wear a sweater. I don't know what it is, man. I think as you get older, at least it's my personal belief. Uh, as you get older, I don't know, I don't know. I just feel like, you, you, you know, your blood gets a little thinner. You know, your body doesn't function as well as it used to. Like, I'll just give you an example. I get off the bed sometimes and my ankles, as I'm walking uh, to the restroom, it starts making noises. Like, shit starts creaking, dude. Um, you know, you got to stretch out now. You can't get up too quick. That's another one. Sometimes I get up too quickly and I feel like, like, like a little bit like, I don't know, like I'm a little bit unbalanced. And then I talk to other people that are around my age and they'll all just tell me, oh, it's just, it's just part of it, man. So for you young bucks that are watching the channel, I appreciate you guys watching, but just know with good time, all the functionality you used to have when you were, you know, your early twenties, when you get to my age, which I'm in my mid forties, uh, things just don't function or work or they take a little longer, uh, you know, for you to warm up. All right, sorry little tangent there um, Porsche Taycan I've lost or sorry I would have lost if I would have bought this car brand new guys back in 2020 I just shared with you guys the Maroni sticker and you're more than welcome to check out you know cars.com you can check out auto trade or auto list there's a bunch of them they're going to show you what the value on it the trade-in value for this car right now is like eighty thousand dollars guys so that means if they're willing to give me $80,000, they're probably gonna list it for around 90,000. I bought it for a little bit over 100 two months ago. So, you know, the, the story goes that you're supposed to wait two, three years for, for before you buy a car so it fully depreciates. And when I mean fully, it means most of it. The car still will depreciate after the fact. But during the first two, three years, that's when the majority of the hit happens on vehicles. and. Something about this car in particular, the hit is continuing, guys. This car, again, is a 2020. It's going close to four years, and the car still depreciating. Um, you know, again, I bought the car for a little bit over 100K. I think it was like 104, 103. And I think the car's probably retailing right now for like maybe, maybe 90,000. 95 would be pushing it. And so as you guys can see, the depreciation on these things is, is incredible. Now, there used to be a game I used to play back in the day of why I go through cars a lot. I can't do that anymore. So part of the game that I used to play was, you know, I could own a car for about a year or two. And I used to buy them brand new guys. So I'm taking that depreciation immediately. The minute you get off that lot, hit, that hit's coming. So the minute you drive off that lot, that hit happens. That's why you don't ever want to buy new. I mean, you lose a lot of value on the car. So this car continued to depreciate. Like I was sharing earlier, what I'm noticing is more with electric vehicles and ICE vehicles uh, where the depreciation happens. But the game I used to play is, you're talking about three years ago. This is pre-pandemic, right? Where, you know, if you guys remember, so I'm a huge Dodge fan in case. I know it's kind of weird for some of you guys that follow this channel for the first time and you guys see me driving a Porsche, that's all you know. But what you will not know is if you've been following my channel, I love muscle cars, not just electric cars. I love Mustang, I love Camaro, and I love, I love Dodge. But Dodge has a special part of my heart, especially like a nice Dodge Challenger. I just love that old school American look. All right, another little tangent there. What I'm trying to get to is, back in the day, you could buy a Dodge vehicle. They used to have the power dollars. You can get discounts. I remember looking at a Red Eye guy, a 2019 Red Eye at the time. This is going back and being able to buy one for like $62,000. No joke, guys, with very low miles. Dude, you won't find a Red Eye now. It's just, it's incredible how much the market has shifted. I say this because I remember buying my Scat Pack. I also owned a Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. And the sticker price back in 2019 when I bought it, that car was like, the sticker was like 5354 and it was the wide body, which you can't get that nowadays. That's a $64,000 car now. That's how much the market has shifted. But but that car was around 5354000 dollars and I was, a, after the power dollars, if you guys remember the good old times for my, my Dodge guys that, that follow the channel, 
Those were the good old days. You had the power dollars, and on top of that, the dealer was also providing discounts on the vehicle. And so, you, you know, I would negotiate a lot of cars, and it wasn't just Dodge. Almost every vehicle you negotiated off the sticker, five, ten, eight, nine thousand dollars off. What that would allow me to do is to play the game. And the game was I could own a vehicle for a year or two. I knew I was gonna take a depreciation hit on my car of around maybe eight to 10,000, but I was okay with it because then I would buy another car that I could negotiate the car down to eight to 10,000. And at the end of the day, I would almost, if you wanna call it break even, it was like I was paying sticker on those cars all the time. And I played this game guys for years. And at times, I didn't even mind losing a thousand or two thousand dollars because in my head, I was like, man, I enjoyed that car for a year or a year and a half before I traded it in for a thousand bucks or two thousand dollars. And that's the game I played. Well, we can't play that game anymore. One, because most dealers right now, at least right now, we're in July, uh, I think it's July like the 12th, 2023. Most cars are not really flexing from the sticker. It depends on the. Uh, the manufacturer, some are, but in most cases they're sticking their guns to stick, especially with the Dodge vehicles uh, and even GM and some other vehicles, especially like Porsche. The, you, you don't negotiate Porsche. It's kind of what you see is what you get. I say all these things because I used to keep the machine going. I wasn't the only one playing this game, guys. Trust me, there was a lot of people doing the whole flip thing, right? Every two, three years or every year they were going in and out because they were able to negotiate the new car they were buying. But what's happening now is that's not happening. And the problem also is what's crazy is your car, a lot of people, I'm included, even though I bought this car used, I'm you guys, I'm telling you, I'm still taking a hit right now if I wanted to sell it. Imagine he who has bought the car brand new like this. They're in the whole 60, $80,000. Imagine he who bought a Dodge or a Camaro or a Challenger or a Ford Mustang or any vehicle during the height where the car prices were so expensive, those people were paying five, 10, $15,000 over sticker guys. And now that car is not valued anywhere near that. So not only, so they're basically paying money on a car that only, not only was it a depreciating, you know, liability, it's terrible now. It's like, you know, you got all that negative delta on top of that, the natural depreciation of the car. So what, what does that do? That tightens up the market, right? So it's like a person that wants to get out of the car to get into a different car. One, they're in the hole. They're underwater, guys. Thousands and thousands of dollars. Like just thousands. So they can't do that. So now they have to ride the wave for longer. And then second, if even if they wanted to do it and we're like, okay, I can figure it out. I'll take a $5,000 loss, which is a shit ton of money and just roll it on to the next loan. Oh, but hold on, dude. If your credit's not that great, you're gonna get a 10, 12, 14, 18% interest. No longer is gonna be that two or six or 8% that you used to get. Guys, I got this car. I have A plus credit. I gave a nice amount down on this car and my credit union, the best it can give me was four and a half on seven years. And if you did eight years, it was 6%. And this was two months ago. And so I asked the lender actually, the credit union asked, hey, what's a typical loan though? Like what a tip, you know, I know, you know, I have great credit, I'm giving them on down. I have a history with this credit union, but tell me, educate me on what you normally see somebody get approved for. And this was, guys, this was two months ago. And he, they were saying the average person is getting like 14 percent kill uh, percent APRs. Holy shit! So your average Joe, if you want to call it, goes to a dealership in the hole, try to get out of the hole. You can't get out the hole with these interest rates, guys. So I just wanted to share this with you guys because you know a lot of times people thought we'll buy used and most of the pre and that's the best out, by the way. That you're still gonna save thousands of dollars going by that way. And what I'm sharing with you, it looks like cars were so high that even people that are buying two, three euros old cars, their cars are still depreciating even more. And it's probably gonna even get worse guys with time because interest rates are just gonna go even higher. 
the Fed just announced they're going to increase rates for the next two, three months. So that's not going to help the market. Now, what is that going to do? For he who has cash, if you got cash, money, dope, cash, cold, hard cash, you're going to find some fantastic deals on cars, guys. So if for some reason you don't have to involve a lender and you have the capital to go out and look at a car in the next three to six months, guys, you're going to be able to find some crazy ass deals on cars and your patience for he who has been waiting will pay off. And if you have cash or at least if you can get 50% down and just finance a lower amount, right? Because cash is king. Man, are you going to be able to get hell of deals on cars, man. As always, guys, appreciate the support. I just wanted to put something out there around how my car has lost so much value and how it continues to lose value after I thought I made a good decision in buying a car that already lost most of its value. So if you're out there shopping, you're trying to play the game, it ain't, game to, it ain't no game to play. You're going to have to just sit back, be patient, uh, let the market do its own justice, and let these car prices go down. So as always, guys, really appreciate the support. Really love all the comments that you guys have been doing. Turn on your notification. Hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And as always, this is Car Connections. And I didn't forget about the cold start because I got to make sure you guys do this car. I do. Hey, listen. Fire. Like cars fire. The exhaust is fire. I'll show it to you guys in just a bit. All right, let's do the cold start. Uh, let's see, you gotta press twice here. 